Welcome back to Switched to Linux. Well, today I want to take a look at Sparky Linux on the Raspberry Pi. Of course, I use a Raspberry Pi to do most of my web design work, and so right now I'm using Manjaro, and it's been feeling a little laggy lately, and there's been a few little issues here and there, and I've been thinking, do I wipe it and just reinstall with XFCE or switch to something else? So when Sparky Linux just came out with a new version based on Debian Bullseye and having a Raspberry Pi image, I thought, let's go ahead and give it a try. Now, there was a few little conflicts here. Let's go ahead and talk about those first, and then we'll get into the rest of the build. First is I downloaded both versions, the open box and the CLI. The CLI version results in a kernel panic on my Raspberry Pi 4 revision 1.5. I did not test it on the 1.4s. So the latest Raspberry Pi you can get, I am not getting able uh, to get into the system. It boots with a kernel panic and freezes and just, you know, goes off in quarter and shivers or whatever else is like, ah! um, yeah, whatever. So that did not work for my system, sadly. The open box does. Now, if you'd like to use a desktop environment other than open box, you are out of luck. You cannot even uninstall open box, install something else. Open box as a zombie keeps coming back from the grave. Literally, I went on there, I'm like, I don't know how to use open box. Let's go ahead and install like XFCE. You boot up, it installs fine. You get in there and once you do anything in the system, open a file manager or whatever else, it just goes back to open box. So I said, well, this is annoying. Let's uninstall open box. I uninstalled open box and it still does the same thing. It comes out and it reloads open box. I'm like, where are you coming from? How do you exist? Because it's literally been deleted and purged from the system. I don't know. I don't understand. I'm not going to dive into it. So I said, well, let's go ahead and give in and see if I can set this guy up with open box. So I reflashed the card since I had messed it up with and trying to install Mate and XFCE on top of it. Removing the open box didn't seem to work. So I went ahead and reflashed the image, boot it back up, run the upgrades, and then I look through and it does have the vast majority of the applications that I need. And who knows, maybe I'll experiment with a few other ones. Mm, queuing the video we did from the sand dunes a couple days ago where you know, maybe we should look at some of our software. But when it comes down to it, my favorite email client for work is Evolution. Um, I do not like this modern way. I don't like how Thunderbird does email now. Uh, I don't like this forced map. I don't like any of that kind of stuff. Evolution is pretty much a gold standard. I do use Thunderbird for other things because I do like the way it can keep accounts completely separate. Um, and so there's certainly an element of this that I want to keep running. And so I use multiple different uh, email providers, uh, email clients, I should say, combining these guys together, we'll see what they can do. So maybe I'll play around with Clause Mail, see how good that is. So I went into the open box and I installed most of the things just on the command line because the downside of the application installer is you gotta do them one at a time and it's really slow. I know I want Evolution, Thunderbird, uh, Firefox, Chromium, I want um, KeyPass XC, FileZilla, Bluefish Editor, I can just install those on, you know, just one or two little commands on the terminal. So I went ahead and installed those there. And then I went digging through some things to figure out where else I'd work. The one thing I could not figure out for a while is how to install desktop, uh, change the wallpaper. Well, that was stupid. That was just a me problem, <laughs> honestly. Um, I fixed that. Uh, there is the application, I think it's called Nitro or Nitrogen, something in there. Uh, I just didn't know what it was because I don't know much about Openbox. Playing with it just for about an hour, I could get used to it possibly. Um, and so yeah, maybe I'll throw it over there and try and get a little bit of work done on it, see how it works. There are certainly some limitations to it that I didn't like, uh, but you know, we'll maybe we'll give it a try and see what I think. Now, one problem that I found, there seems to be a little issue, uh, file man, the file man, it's PC, uh, PC man FM is in allegedly installed. It is in the open box launcher. It says it's there, but I click it. It wasn't working. What's going on? Yeah, I won't go ahead, go back, undo that part. What does that work? It's still not working. So I go in to install another file manager. I look at a couple different ones. It's like, eh, this is like, wanted to install a whole suite of things. I see, yeah, let, let's look at the 
file manager, um, uh, PCFM, right in the app installer, it's not installed. So there's a desktop, uh, there's a desktop icon for it somewhere, but there's actually no application, which is why it's on the launcher. Uh, we actually saw a few other desktop icons that were there in the bedded in the system. They didn't show up in the launcher, but they did show up in like the tint configurations. Those are Google Chrome. Um, there were four of them, Google Chrome, uh, regular Firefox, not the ESR version, and a few other things which were in the configuration. So apparently uh, the guys working Sparky were testing that these worked, created the tent configurations, uninstalled the, those applications, and never removed the desktop files so they show up in the themes. So there's a few little QA issues that are missing, but nothing that's absolutely out of the ordinary. I did test the network installs. There's no network prober. There's no option in, T, in uh, the file manager to look for network shares. But if you just go up to the address bar and do the SMB, um, and I was able to boot into my file manager and work on all that kind of stuff. So my original assessment does work. I also booted up Firefox. I went over, played a YouTube video, and the audio is working out of the audio port. I did not test it out of HDMI. Presumably it works. That was the one issue that was not working with Debian. And while this computer, I do not use audio a lot, I do need it there in the event I need to watch a video from somebody or something like that. I'm pleased to report that the video did play on YouTube on Firefox, although full screening in 1080p did result in laggy and kind of, not buffering, but uh, it was certainly lagging behind. I can understand that. I don't generally watch full screen video on that, so I don't really care. As long as I can get it in something small and I can hear it, that is my requirement. So this did solve the reason I'm not using Debian on my work Raspberry Pi is because the last time I tried it, which was about 18 months ago now, audio was not working on, uh, on the Raspberry Pi for Debian in my situation and circumstances. So we do have that resolved and fixed now. That is totally awesome. I'm pleased to see that. So all of my original testing in the system appears as though it might work fairly well. It doesn't have quite the the, the gloss as the Manjaro. There's a few things that eh, I think will probably be annoyances to me, but I'm willing to give it a try for a little bit, just kind of see. So the next step for me, I'm gonna go ahead and port my emails and uh, files and some basic stuff over there. Although this is a short-term test, I'm using an SD card with half the size, so I can't run everything over there. And then I'll keep the Manjaro one around. So what I'm gonna do is I'll keep that one around and I'll test this one uh, just setting it aside. See, this is actually just my, my test Raspberry Pi. I keep extra ones around just for testing things so I don't have to mess with my infrastructure of this one that's actually screwed to the wall which I like. Um, but anyway, that is uh, my quick initial test of uh, Sparky Linux running the Raspberry Pi. Overall, it is working very well as long as you want to use OpenBox because you can't install uh, any other desktop environment on the OpenBox version. It messes it up and the CLI version is not working in my instance. So if you want to use Sparky Linux and you like OpenBox, go for it it's available. If you want to use Sparky Linux with anything else, eh, you're out of luck. Uh, that's kind of my initial thoughts. Overall though, it was neat. Uh, go ahead and take a look at it. It's going to force me to play around with a different desktop environment, so that's okay too. I don't mind that. Uh, with all that said, guys, we'll leave this one here. Thanks for watching. Have a look at, uh, I, I have the links to that. If you have a Raspberry Pi, you want to uh, play around with it, you can Go ahead and download that from the Sparky Downloads. I'll have that linked uh, in the description of the video. Thanks for watching, everybody. Have a look over the website, uh, particularly the support page, um, as YouTube keeps on demoting and demoting and demoting stuff and you know giving me channel strikes. Uh, you can always help out with Patreon, Subscribestar, things like that. Those are all linked at switchtolinux.com slash support. Thanks for watching, everybody, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux. Thank you for watching this video from Switched to Linux. This channel would not be possible without the backing of the program supporters scrolling on the screen now. You can be a supporter at Patreon at patreon.com slash T-O-M-M -M or at thinklifemedia.com.
I also want to thank the open source community who creates such excellent software that makes producing this show possible. Please remember to support your software communities. Thank you, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.